So there's gonna be a lot of different thoughts out there as to what you wanna get, what you wanna have for your backpack, and what stuff you're gonna put in your backpack. And for me, I like to be as relatively comfortable as possible, but as lightweight as possible. Doing both of those things, you can't do either or uh, to the extreme, but you can find a, find a nice middle ground uh, where you're gonna have a real nice outing and you're gonna be relatively comfortable while not carrying in tons of weight. Let's take a closer look at this pack. This is the Element 60. It's my recommended pack as of right now. I've used a lot of different ones over the years between Gregory, Osprey, Tactical Tailor, uh, Hill People Gear, Jan Sport, lots of different packs I've had, and Eddie Bauer recently. I've had a lot of packs I've used, uh, evaluated, and I even had a different Black Diamond that I used about uh, two years ago. And there were a few things, there was, there was a few things on there I thought they could do better. Uh, this Element 60 is lighter than that one. That was called their Mercury 65. This one's lighter and uh, it's set up better, I believe. So let's start on the outside of the pack. We'll go through the stuff we have here and uh, on the other side. And we'll go through exactly what I have. Now, if you're an ultra lightweight backpacker, you're in a different game. This is just for uh, you know the everyday person who wants to go out and have a comfortable trip. Uh, they don't mind packing in a little bit extra weight for comfort. Uh, if you're an ultra lightweight backpacker, just a different game. So let's start on the outside of the pack. We'll go through and look at what we got. First off, we're gonna have some sort of a container. Now, here's a stainless steel single walled. You can use this to boil. This is a Blackthorn USA uh, with a Nalgene cap. And I've used this for years now. It's great. And like I said, you can use this, say your water filter gives out on you, uh, it gets clogged up, you can't get it working. Um, this is something you can put water in. You're gonna wanna uh, get the sediment out by putting maybe a schmal over top and putting the water through that. But um, you can take this and boil the water and you can have good clean water to drink. It's kinda like a good backup plan. Some people are gonna wanna use Nalgene's and that's fine. You're just gonna wanna take the disinfection tablets uh, that you find maybe by Catadyne or other companies out there. Take those with as your backup plan, maybe instead of using the stainless steel. Either way, you're gonna have a decent backup plan. Now, depending on the time of year, you're gonna wanna take different amounts of water. If you're going in the middle of summer, it's 100 degrees out, uh, you're gonna want a lot of water with you. If you're going when I like to go backpacking, which is uh, fall, spring, and winter, uh, you can take a little bit less water. Uh, but you know, just packing in, you're gonna want at least 64 ounces of water, which is two Nalgene's. Um, or in this case, this is also 32 ounces, so two of uh, these. Now recently, what I've come across is this MSR dromedary bag. This is made of 1000D Cordura. They also make a dromedary light, which is also very strong, but uh, about half the weight, I believe, is this one. And you can just fill these up. They come in, I believe they come in two, four, six, and uh, 10 liters. So you can get one of their two or fours, fill it up, and that's two uh, Nalgene's, four Nalgene's, etc. So each liter is one Nalgene. So what I've come to the conclusion of being really good for me is I'll take one bottle of water and I'll take a dromedary bag, a uh, two liter, and I'll fill that up and put it in my pack so I have three Nalgene bottles. That's a great start to a backpacking trip. You're gonna have a little bit more weight, but you're gonna have water if you're going to areas where you might have a difficulty finding water on the trail. And again, this is all very speculative on my part. This is more of an overview of what I have. Now granted, I'm in the Northeast, so I have different um, areas to get water versus maybe you're in a desert and you don't. So you're gonna have to look at your water situation yourself and figure out if you're gonna need more or less water based upon what's on the trail for you to, uh, to go to. What's next? I like to have options. And this buck saw by uh, Bob Destrudis, you've seen this in tons of different videos. You can see it packs up very lightweight. It is lightweight, it barely weighs anything, but it's a 24 inch uh, saw so I can do some wood processing. Uh, I like to have a fire. Like I said, I like to go in spring, fall, and the winter time. Don't like to go in the summertime. So making a fire for either food uh, preparations or uh, you know just to have a fire at night, uh, I do like to have that option. So packing in this little bit of weight, have this awesome saw, uh, I like to do that. Along with a saw, I like to bring an ax. If you're gonna saw stuff, you wanna make sure that you have the ability to uh, process that firewood. This is a Wetterlings. This is their uh, small hunter's ax. It's about 18 inches in length and it has uh, a decent amount of weight to the head. 
uh, of the axe. So you're gonna have good ability to split wood. You've seen this again in many videos. This is a really good option to have on your pack. It doesn't have a ton of weight to it, but it does have a lot of performance to it. You've seen the reviews, you've seen this in other videos and other camping trips I've been on, um, particularly with uh, Nate Murr, my buddy. We, uh, we go on camping trips, we like to process wood and uh, have a campfire every night. So taking something like this gives us that ability. Do you have to take it yourself? No, if you're gonna take a stove and you're not looking to uh, use a campfire, make a campfire, you might not need this. But uh, like I said, I don't mind carrying a little bit extra weight to have uh, options. For example, the one time we went out, we made a bench uh, to sit on that night on the, I think it was the Roche PA trip on the Appalachian Trail. We made a, uh, a bench and without this in hand, we couldn't have made that improvised bench out there in the, uh, the middle of the woods. So um, that's the kind of stuff we like to do. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, axes uh, and a little bit of extra weight give you the ability to do. As far as what's on me, what's on my person, I like to carry a knife with me. Uh, you can do a lot of different stuff in regard to uh, preparations of food. You can do uh, shelter making and the such with uh, a good knife. This is a Heli Viking. And uh, I've had this for about a year, maybe two years now. Uh, come to like a lot, has a nice long blade to it. Uh, but having a good blade that you keep nice and uh, conditioned and oiled and taken care of is something that's gonna come in handy out there in the woods. So let's go to the top of this pack and uh, see what we got in here. First off, we have some rope. This is just some 550 paracord. Nothing wrong with taking a hank of this. This is made about 50, 75 uh, feet of it. Uh, if you gotta put your food up in a tree, etc., cetera, uh, it's always good to have some uh, rope with you. I got a little, uh, little cloth here. You can wipe off your blades and uh, you know, wipe off your hands, etc. You want you got a mug, if you wanna make chocolate, coffee, tea, whatever you're into, you wanna take a mug of some sort. This is an MSR Titan. I got a cook kit here. This is, I don't even know the maker of this pot, but it's super lightweight. You wanna have a pot of some sort. I'm not sure the maker of this, uh, but this is super lightweight. This is titanium, it weighs barely anything. The downside of this one is the fact that a uh, canister of uh, butane, isobutane, does not fit on the inside and closed up. I'm not sure why they made it that way, but uh, you want to have a container of some sort. You can save a lot of weight with uh, going to a super lightweight one, either titanium or aluminum is the lightest weight, I believe. I say you, may, you want to make sure that your container holds two cups of water because the majority of meals out there in bags you use two cups of water. You got to boil two cups of water, so make sure your container holds at least two cups of water. For an overnight, you're just going to need one canister of isobutane, which is overkill, but uh, that's all you're really going to need. I have a medical kit and I got my steaks. I have separate steaks. These are MSR groundhog steaks. They're the best steaks on the market. Um, they stay in place, they don't bend when you're nailing them in after time, after time, after time to the ground. Um, even when you hit a uh, rock, possibly, I haven't had these bend. Best steaks on the market, worth an extra purchase for them. As far as a medical kit, we got moleskin on here, or in here. We have some sort of a uh, triple antibiotic ointment, and I have a uh, Hybacleans. A lot of people put hydrogen peroxide. Um, I just have a Biotene mouthwash bottle, which I have uh, emptied out. And then I put a uh, Hybaclens in here, which is a much better uh, cleaner than hydrogen peroxide. It also lasts longer. So I can leave it in here longer and it's not going to, uh, to die. And then I have to refill it. And there's just a bunch of other stuff in here like alcohol wipes um, and some uh, you know stuff to take care of minor issues. You, the main stuff you also wanna have in here is ibuprofen, uh, Imodium, and Benadryl. You have all those in here with a few things for nicks and scratches, and definitely for blisters, uh, you're good to go. When you take the top part off of the pack, you can actually get to this front side. And this is where I said this has great organization. So on this side, I have my MSR uh, gravity-fed water filter. Love this thing, super fast and uh, really lightweight. Platypus also makes one. They're basically the same company. Uh, they're underneath the same umbrella and these kits are basically the same. So if you get the platypus one, which doesn't have as robust of a, um, a gravity uh, container here, uh, it's a little bit less money, but uh, they're both excellent. And MSR tests their stuff end of life uh, for its claims. So you might see other ones on the market where they say they claim they go down to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 microns. Uh, that's their very best. That's like right of a fresh filter. When you see MSR's claims, that's end of life. 
So uh, take that into consideration when you're looking for a uh, water filter. We got a trial here for uh, going number two. And that's all I got in the front here. I have nothing else in the front here. So here I got a bag. This is a outdoor research bag. I like these little packs. These are great for organization. They have pull tabs on both sides. So when you stick it in uh, to the bag upside down, either way, you can just go in there and grab the grab handle and pull it out easily. They're water resistant, not waterproof. I have a bunch of stuff in here. You got some camp suds to keep yourself clean and uh, your plates and bowls and all that stuff. I have a uh, little knife sharpener. Alcohol. Well, this is hand sanitizer. Some uh, duct tape. It's Gorilla Tape. Instant fire, fire starter. Headlamp. Those are really important. You, Until you've used a headlamp when you're on a camping trip, you don't realize how much you really like using them or need them. I just got some of uh, these emergency glow sticks. I have some smaller cord. This is uh, probably four times thinner, lightweight stuff. I got some extra batteries in case your headlamp goes out. I got some matches, and then I have a lighter, which is going to be your first. That's going to be the first thing you're going to use as a lighter. Um, if you're out there and it's easy to do, go ahead and use it. Move to a ferro rod second. Um, I have some more lighter. Uh, fire starters here. This is called burner. Stuff's great. On the other side I have this water purification tabs from Katadyne. Um, I like to have backups to my backup just in case anything goes wrong. So I got some of those on there. I got this uh, poop kit as many people would call it. Just have a little bit of toilet paper here and then I have some wipes. The second one I got here is the food I have for the overnight backpacking trip. So when you think overnight, um, what you're going to do is probably go in on a Saturday morning. So you're going to probably eat breakfast before you go in. So you're going to need lunch, dinner, breakfast the next morning, and lunch the next day. So you need two lunches, a dinner, and a breakfast. So I have some snacks and breakfast here. I have some electrolyte. This is um, EFS. Then I have some jerky and cream of wheat right here for breakfast. Southwest lasagna. This is a uh, meal you just throw into uh, your, you can either put the water in here or you can put the water and mix it together in your bowl. Um, so this is Southwest Lasagna by Hawk Vittles. I have a mashed potatoes and gravy by Alpine Air. And then a creamy potato and cheddar soup by Alpine Air. Long spoon, always your friend. And then I got some smaller stuff in here. Just some energy gels right here. You're going in for an overnighter, so you don't need tons of different uh, stuff to eat. Like I said, you're going to need what I said, plus maybe a snack here or there. Um, overnight trips, you don't need tons of food. All right, what's next here? We have a Thermarest. This is their Evo Light, I think is what it's called. Super lightweight. This is definitely for fall, springtime. Depending on the winters you get, you might be able to get by with this in the winter but it's definitely something that you want to use three seasons. If you're going four seasons, Thermarest makes one that uh, is a four season or more of a deep winter. It has uh, metallic stuff on it to reflect your body heat back to you. Um, I'd recommend that one for winter, but uh, for the rest of the year, this Evo Light, super lightweight, works great. As far as cooking goes, I have this Optimus Polaris. This is a multi-fuel stove. You can use gas or isobutane. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. I use it mainly as isobutane. i um, been using it for a little bit here recently and I like it. So I'm using that one. Other than this, the MSR Pocket Rocket works awesome. And uh, it's probably a third the weight of this. So um, that's another one you can look at. I have a tarp in here, just fold it up like this. It's good to have to sit on something so you're not directly on the ground. Um, you can see this is probably about four by four a four by three and it's folded up and um, this is from a tarp that actually had a puncture and I got to use it for another pur pur uh, purpose so I like to take a little bit of a tarp with. As far as clothes go you don't need tons of clothes on an overnight trip. Uh, what you're going to want to take with, now this is depending on the time of year, uh, if it is a little bit cooler out you're going to want to take some sort of a uh, something to throw on. This is a packable L.L. Bean um, jacket. It has Prima Loft in it, so it's nice and warm with not a lot of weight and bulk. 
and pop it out like that and throw this on if you're if you're cold. Uh, so that's a good option for maybe fall time, early spring. Um, other than that, you're going to need some socks, maybe a change of underwear, and um, something to wear at night. And um, you're not going to need too terribly much. So depending on you as a person, um, if you're colder or hotter, it's going to depend on what you're going to take. But at a very, very minimum, you want to take an extra pair of socks with. You want to change those every morning. As far as a creature comfort, I got this Sierra Design pillow. This is a down pillow. It packs up real small. And... Um, real nice and comfortable when you're out there on the backpacking trail to have a nice uh, pillow behind your uh, neck. Sleep is really important for recovery and uh, taking something that gives you that better sleep, totally worth it in my opinion. As far as the tent I'm taking, this is a two-person tent by MSR. This is their Hubba Hubba NX two-person. Um, I'm one person, but a two-person tent is for one person a three person tents for two people. I like to have space and um, one person tent, you basically just fit in there like, psh, and I don't like that. <laughs> so I use two people tents, uh, two person tents for, uh, for myself when I go. Um, this one's really good. It's nice and lightweight, tons of um, you know, ventilation, which I like. And um, you know, it just fits what, I, what I'm doing. So this is what I'm using currently. I also reviewed a Nemo Galaxy can definitely recommend that one as well. A little more robust and a little bit heavier than this one, but uh, also a great option. Now, as far as a sleeping bag goes, this is an Eddie Bauer. This is their um, uh, 20 degree. It's their Storm Down. And I actually had a, I, I hit a snag with this one where I got it caught on the zipper and I had to repair it. So I lost a little bit of down. Their Storm Down came out. <laughs> that was uh, a few years ago. But uh, I use this one mainly for the majority of the trips because a 20 degree sleeping bag will get you through pretty much anything minus deep winter. So all spring and fall time stuff, this is easily going to get me through. You can see right here is where I repaired it. Uh, this will easily get me through that. Um, maybe pack a little bit extra um, layering if it's a little cooler out. But a 20 degree sleeping bag is going to get you through early spring. Um, most of spring, fall, and early winter, and late winter. So I like to take a 20 degree. If it's deep winter, take a zero degree. And again, it's all going to be dependent upon where you live and the climate there. Now, one other thing you're going to want to take with is a compass and map. You're going to want to know where you're going and have a map of it. Um, you can take your phone. If you're going to take your phone and depend on it, make sure you take one of those like anchor power packs. I'll put, I'll put links down below to almost all this stuff. Um, but you want to take one of those anchor power packs if you're going to be dependent on um, some sort of devices that require recharging. Um, but always have a compass on you and a map of where you're at. Uh, and always remember to tell people where you're going uh, before you go out on your adventure. So that's pretty much it. That's wrapping up almost everything you're going to need to uh, go on an overnight backpacking trip. If you're looking to uh, extend this out, the only thing you're really going to need is to take a few more clothes and a little bit more food. Um, other than that, you, the rest of this stuff is going to be the same for a weekend uh, trip compared to an overnight trip. So if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. If you guys have your uh, stuff that you like to take and you found works really well, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later.